Hi everyone, welcome back to the Rustic Oak Farm. My name is Alicia. I don't think I've ever introduced myself on these videos. My husband's name is Jeff and we have four beautiful children. So I thought I would just kind of throw that out there because all these videos that I make, I don't think I've ever mentioned what my name was. So I'm very sorry about that. So my name is Alicia. But today we're going to be going into the garden and seeing what the garden looks like because we have been getting so much rain every day. I've mentioned in previous videos that all this rain that we've been getting every day is such a blessing, really. It's really good for the hay field, all the farmers around here. So I'm just really thankful that we're actually getting rain this year, this spring. So I'm hoping it continues on into the summertime though. So there's a lot going on in this garden right now. I am completely done planting everything in this whole entire garden. So we're gonna walk through and see what's growing. The rain has been amazing. Everything's growing so well. One thing that I have noticed, I've caught three rabbits in our garden. So I really hope they don't damage anything. So I'm gonna walk through this morning and just see if they've touched anything. And I need to start looking for squash bugs and squash bug eggs because I got pumpkins growing and I got zucchini and yellow squash growing and cucumbers. So I really need to focus on seeing if I have any uh, bugs that I need to worry about. So I'm gonna look everything over really well and we're just gonna see how well everything's growing. So let's go ahead and get in the garden. Okay, so walking through the main entrance of the garden to the left side, this is all going to be flowers. Now these are still doing really well. They're really young still. And then I got some dill growing back here that's actually getting ready to go to flower. You can kind of see here. Look at that. So we got some dill. And then we do have some snapdragons that are starting to bloom and some love in a mist and some bachelor buttons which the bachelor buttons look like they're almost done and then we got some yarrow we actually this penny crest actually formed which is really cool i always have a hard time with that every year and then this is actually a little just uh, concrete blocks that i made into like a flower bed so I got two plants of comfrey growing here. I'm gonna use that for my composting, my green manure. Then I got some flowers right here in front of it. Now my dahlias aren't looking the best. I think there's just too much mulch in here and it's not liking it. So I doubt I will get any dahlias this year, which is totally fine. I, next year I'll just try again. I just need to get this mulch to break down even more so stuff can grow better next year. So looking over here, so this is all the zucchini and yellow squash in this little corner right here. And I actually planted some more over here. So this is gonna be actually a big little patch of zucchini and yellow squash. So I need to start actually looking and seeing if I see any squash bug eggs. So right here, I'm actually seeing some damage on these leaves. So all I have to do is like turn it over and start looking to see if I in, see any squash bug eggs. I know they're coming. Squash, squash bugs are so hard to deal with. They usually take over our patch and start killing out plants. I did wrap the bases with foil to help with the vine borers getting in there. So I am not seeing any eggs just yet though, which is really good. So we'll just continue on. Uh, so the middle section is where I planted my watermelon seeds and they're actually starting to pop up. Some of them, I might have to replant some of them because some of the holes don't have any popping up just yet. Now on the back side here is my pumpkins. They are looking amazing, which again, squash bugs will take these over and usually will kill out my plant. So I basically just hope and pray every year that I can grow my pumpkins, which it's really hard to grow the pumpkins. And then same with this, I need to start looking for squash bug eggs. I know they're coming, 
which I'm really surprised I haven't seen any yet. Oh, there's some right there. So it looks like I need to get out here with some tape and start getting those off of there because once they start hatching, they will start demolishing all of my pumpkin plants. It'll just be a total mess and it's so devastating every year whenever they take over and completely kill out your plant. So I just hope this year I can control it and get on top of it, which we grow quite a bit. You can see here, this is all gonna be pumpkins. So that's a lot to manage. All right, so we'll go back to the front up here. Okay, so we looked at this flower row. Let's go to the right side of the garden. This is my lettuce row. I planted more lettuce. You can see all the baby sprouts coming up. And I am going to start covering my lettuce because I had a lot of um, bugs in our lettuce already this year. So I need to get the net out and cover this row. So this is some lettuce that are starting to bolt a little bit. I might have to just rip it out. And then I got some lettuce down there that I need to actually eat. And then these are some beets. I'm not sure if these will actually do anything because I grew them in the burnt holes. Not sure if they have enough room, but I'm just gonna wait it out. And if it doesn't do anything, I'll rip them out and plant more lettuce. So this whole entire front row will be my lettuce row this year. All right, looking over here, look at these carrots. They are absolutely huge. I mean, they have grown so much. I mean, look at my hand. It goes all the way up. So that's exciting. Um, I mentioned in my previous video that there's three sections of different varieties of carrots. This one actually has been the best variety. Look how full it is over here. And you can kind of see the little spaces that this one did not germinate very well. And then same here. This one germinated a little bit better, but that variety down there, if it turns out really well when we harvest, I might have to just stick to that variety. So this is the potatoes. <laughs> They're actually really huge too. Uh, the flowers already flowered and they died. So now I'm basically just waiting for all of these plants to kind of just die out. And then we can harvest all the potatoes. You can see the wind damaged a little hole over here, the laying over. I actually need to take some of that and put it over the soil so my potatoes won't be green whenever we harvest. Because green potatoes are toxic and they can hurt your stomach. So at the end of the potato row, we have more lettuce growing and this actually really needs to be eight. Uh, I'm gonna have to wash this really well because I never covered it and I can see a few bugs uh, walking around in it. So uh, with lettuce, I like to keep it covered and I just haven't covered it this year for some reason and I need to do that. But this is definitely ready to be eight. And then this bed is green beans. Look how beautiful these green beans are. They're actually getting ready to flower, so won't be long and we will be harvesting green beans to can. We love to can our green beans. That's how we pres preserve them. And I did a video not that long ago about planting our sweet potatoes. They look a little rough right now, but they did that last year and they came out of it. So I'm just, it is what it is. Uh, I think they'll do just fine. So I'm just gonna let them kind of do their thing. We've been getting cool mornings. So they really like the heat. So once it starts heating up, I think they will do just fine. And then I got some Swiss chard growing at the very end of this bed. And then bring in here, this is my um, herb section. I've already harvested yesterday my oregano. It was really tall. And then I got some thyme that I actually really need to harvest. It's already went to flower. And then same with my cilantro, it's going to flower. I need to rip it out and plant it again. My parsley is 
ready to start being harvested. It's doing really good. And then this is my rosemary. It's growing. And then I think this is marjoram. I think that's how you say it. It's actually getting ready to go to flower, which it's in, it's not in very good soil. So I'm not really expecting too much out of this, these two pots. Okay, so walking over here, I did a video about planting my tomatoes. And looky here, we already have some flowers. Look at this beautiful plant. This is actually like a cherry tomato. So of course, all the cherry tomatoes do amazing in my garden. And then this one is yellow pear. This is my kids' favorite tomato. So that's their little plant. And then a few of these are my sauce Roma tomatoes. The, this one was the only one that didn't survive, which I planted some old starts. Hopefully they'll take off because I really don't have to buy a plant. I started all these myself. And then this half of the row down, slicing tomatoes. And then we got more canning tomatoes. These, I believe, are low acidity. And I like to use this variety because it's easier on our stomachs. So they're all doing really well. I need to actually put tomato cages on six of these tomatoes right here. But I don't know if, about you guys, but I priced the tomato cages at Walmart and they're $5 a piece. That's insane. It's gonna be like $30 to finish out these six containers, but I might just have to break down and go ahead and buy them because I have these little sticks holding up my tomatoes because we be getting some storms. Okay, so I took you back up to the front of the garden. We were back there by the tomatoes, but I came back up here. So my last videos, I put in some buckwheat for my cover crop because I don't have anything growing in these rows right now and I love to use buckwheat. It's a summer cover crop and it grows really fast. It actually sprouted within three days whenever I uh, seeded it. So uh, it's growing really well. So this half of the row back here is Brussels sprouts. Um, I will check that in June, which it is June 1st today. Um, here in a couple weeks, I will be checking to see if it forms any Brussels sprouts. And then these rows, in between my planting time, there's buckwheat growing right here, but I will cut this down in a couple months and I will continue to grow my brassicas in here whenever it's time to plant them. Okay, and then this is my cabbage. Looky here. They are forming so well. I mean, I... I will be harvesting these in probably two weeks, maybe more. But look at these cabbage. Ugh, they are so beautiful. And one thing I will have to do is keep a close eye on them because when it starts getting really hot outside, they will start splitting within days if you don't check them very often. So that's something I need to keep my eye on with excessive heat. And then moving over here, uh, this is the first year that I actually started cucumbers indoors just to get a jump start on uh, my planting and harvesting. So this whole entire row of cucumbers was started indoors and I transplanted them. And look how big they're getting. They're already climbing up the trellis and there was one down here yesterday that was starting to flower. Yep, down here. Um, right here, you can see there's a little flower starting. So that's exciting. We'll get cucumbers soon. So this will be ahead of this row over here. This row was just planted with seeds in the ground. So you can kind of see that how smaller they are. And I actually need to go back through here and reseed a couple holes that didn't germinate. 
So this is exciting. This is, we, we can a ton of pickles. My husband is a huge pickle fan. And that's one of our things that we love doing is canning pickles. We always turn in pickles at the county fair every year. And one year we won first prize and we got a $25 gift card. So that was really cool. And so it's just really fun, something fun that we do every year at the county fair. We turn in our garden vegetables and you know, we get judged. So it's really cool. And then this is the Xena row and I have some sunflowers planted in here. And of course we went over the watermelon and pumpkin patch and the zucchini and yellow squash. So we're gonna walk straight back here. So this row right here is my pepper row. I'm going to have to uh, put up a netting for these uh, peppers, but they're growing really well. They're getting really tall. See here, uh, we've been getting a lot of rain. So um, these rows have been holding some water, which they're kind of mounted up. You can kind of tell in this video, but we are getting some flowers. Look at this. They're starting to flower. So it won't be long and we will be getting some peppers forming. So I got some hot jalapeno, non-hot jalapeno, California wonder, poblano. So that's all I have planted here. And then down here, I like to plant a bunch of basil because I like to dry my basil and use it through the winter time to season my food. So this is all basil through here. I got two uh, tomato plants, which this one has flowers on it, which is really cool. And then the rest of these holes is planted in basil. I'm just waiting for them to, they are starting to germinate right there. So we'll get tons of basil to harvest. And then turning over here, I planted some okra. So I got kind of, I think there's three different varieties of okra right here. One a red variety and another is a green. So they look like they're getting ate down by something. I just don't know what it is. I always come out and turn over these leaves, but I don't see anything. I come out early morning, evening, and I just, I don't know what it is. So that's what I'm talking about. I might have to reseed some of these because usually the pest will damage some plants and I will have to reseed and try again. But some of them are looking really good, but we'll keep a close eye on that. And then this one right here. So this left side, I have some cowpeas growing and they're looking okay. They're getting some pest pressure as well, but they're actually growing really well. They're getting taller. And then on the other side, you can see here, we got some uh, snap peas growing. These are just for the kids to snack on. I haven't grown these in many years. We grew these at the old house because we had a bigger garden. But now that we have a big garden again, um, I grew these for the first time in a long time and the kids love coming out here and getting a snack. So I'm glad I planted that this year. Then this row right here is, it looks like a mess, <laughs> but it's my asparagus. My asparagus is taking over. I really need to buy more uh, string and kind of do the floor to weave and get this off the ground because I got celery growing on each side of my asparagus. The asparagus helps shade out the celery so it doesn't get so hot from the sun. And it worked perfectly last year. And you can see this side, this side looks like it's doing really well. So really happy about that and then this is the garlic row these are actually starting to die out so here in a couple weeks we will be harvesting the, all this garlic and drying it in our garage we've already took off the garlic scapes looking really good and at the end of this row down here I always plant 
our red onions at the very end of the garlic row. And they're starting to bulb up a little bit. You can kind of see right there. And then on the row next to it, these are my main bulbing onions. You can see here that they are starting to bulb right there. So I believe we harvest these in July. I think that's when we harvested them last year. They're looking really good, getting tall. I see the bulbs starting on a lot of them. And then I got some green onions down here, Egyptian walking onions. So yeah, I think that, I think that's it actually, <laughs> looking at all this. So we got a lot going on here. I'm just kind of in that stage of just waiting for harvest. So I think my next harvest will be my cabbage. So I'll be harvesting those in a couple weeks and processing those, maybe making sauerkraut. And then I'll probably be harvesting my garlic. And what else? Definitely my lettuce. We'll be harvesting lettuce. We still actually need to harvest lettuce right now. And let's see. Yeah, I think that's my, just my, and the Brussels sprouts, I'll be watching that. I'm not sure if they will actually do anything. I think they're more of a fall crop. So we're gonna do a quick run through in the berry patch. I have a ton of weeds that I need to weed out of here. But I think we're gonna end our berry season strawberries uh, in probably 15 to 16 pounds of strawberries in the freezer right now. And I see actually a few that we actually need to pick. Look at those. But these ones right here, uh, there's really no flavor in them because we've been getting so much rain. But I'm still gonna pick them and harvest them and preserve them. So you can see though right here, the runners are coming off of these strawberries plants. So what I'm going to be doing is taking all these runners and making sure that they're going back into the soil so they can make new plants for next year. So I can see here that they're growing outside of this net and I really need to take care of that before the plant starts growing bigger because I really want all of these beds to really fill up for next year because we're going to get a ton of berries next year. Same with this bed. This is the new planted this spring. All these runners that come off this will fill up this half of the bed. And I'll be ripping out all of these and planting probably most of these runners in here this fall. So this these plants have been here four years now. It's time to rip them out and put fresh new runners in here. So this bed will be taking over next year and just continuing the cycle every four years, um, just redoing the strawberries and continuing their growth and being really healthy. Sometimes I'm nervous to come in here because every year this black netting that we have, this bird netting, a snake always gets trapped in these nettings. So I have to like walk really slow. I'm scared to death of snakes. So I just got to keep my eye out because the snakes really like this netting for some reason. So we got a few flowers growing on the side of the greenhouse here. And then, so walking over here, so the greenhouse is closed down for the year. Uh, the only thing I really need to do is make sure that the weeds are not going to take over these bricks. So hot water, hot boiling water usually takes care of it. That's my trick is how I get rid of weeds. Now look over here. There are so many weeds. Look at this. I need to get in here and start weeding this berry patch so bad. But look at all these flowers on these blackberries. Uh, we're gonna get more berries than I thought. They're loaded in flowers. Look at this, you can see there's some berries already starting to form. 
see all these flowers way more than I thought so that's a really good sign that we're gonna get blackberries this year I was a little bummed because this section didn't come back like I was hoping it would you can see here like all these dead branches that I actually need to cut out but um, it looks like we're gonna have a good year uh, right here is the raspberries they have taken off they are huge these are probably taller than they have ever been and I always cut them down in the springtime to get one harvest I can usually get two harvests if I want to but I cut them down in the spring and I get one harvest around September and these are really tall so I really think we're gonna get a good harvest this year on raspberries and then this is our everbearing blackberries uh, I think the birds might have got most of these berries already. I usually cover this in a netting, but I'm using the netting right now for strawberries because the strawberries are doing so well. So once the strawberries are completely done, I will drape over the bird netting to help uh, with the birds not eating our berries. And I do have a plastic owl that I usually put in here and it helps a little bit, but he's in the main garden right now. But look at all these flowers. Let me take you over here. I'm just looking out for snakes right now. <laughs> so look at here. There's a bunch of flowers and we got berries growing. We're gonna have a good harvest this year. I'm excited. And there's a ton of flowers down there. You probably can't see it because the camera's so light. But there's some up here and then looking over here these are the roots from these berry plants and I just planted all the roots here so these might take a couple years before they do anything but they're actually starting to flower on some of them yeah look at here there's actually berries growing how neat but I'm not going to expect too much out of these, but they're doing really well, so I'm happy about that. So just this quick little run down in the berry patch. I see a ton of butterflies flying around because of all these flowers. So yeah, I just need to get in here and weed out the weeds. They're starting to take over. You can see everywhere. Even though we do the no-till garden, uh, just lay down mulch, it is completely taking over in weeds. We don't even turn any of this over. So my few little projects will be putting the strawberry runners back into the soil, making sure that they're rooting down into the beds. And then I need to get in here and weed out the weeds and probably need to put my fake owl in here so whenever these blackberries come on, the birds are not eating everything. Once these berries stop producing berries, which we still got berries. You can see all these red berries. Um, whenever they're done, I'm gonna take all this black netting off of all of my strawberries. And I'll probably just put them on my blackberries to help the birds not eat them. But I usually roll up my black netting and store them in the garage to help um, preserve them. Because if you keep them out in the sun all summer, they will dry rot. So eventually I'll be rolling up all of this net and storing it. But this is the quick little rundown of the berry patch. We've had an amazing strawberry year. And I've mentioned in one of my videos, if you're looking for a really good strawberry variety, uh, Sure Crop has been amazing this year for us. This is our first year harvesting Sure Crop. And I'm telling you what, we got the best uh, harvest out of this variety so far. Out of growing strawberries for many years, that's the variety I'm sticking with. So I'm really happy, really blessed. We got 15 to 16 pounds of strawberries. I haven't fully counted it up yet because I still need to vacuum seal uh, the last batch that I did. And then we still got a few to harvest. So I'm actually gonna do a total uh, weigh in 
uh, in the next video or two that I make. So I will tell you guys um, how many strawberries we got this year. So that's exciting. Okay, so let's go check on the um, fruit trees. Let's go see how they're doing. I am a little nervous because we are noticing a lot of squirrels and I am afraid that they are gonna be climbing these trees and eating these apples and peaches. So um, I've been meaning to get some chicken wire and putting it around the bottom of the big trees that have fruit growing on them right now, just to kind of help detour the squirrels. But I've never really noticed this many squirrels until this year. I don't know what the deal is. Um, I have noticed them climbing up some of these trees close to the uh, fruit trees. So I'm hoping, I'm just hoping that they stay away. But I'm going to turn you guys around and look at these apples. There's so many. There's so many that there's a cluster of apples that's weighing down a branch. So I might, I might have to uh, take some of the apples off so the branch don't break. But everything's looking so good. Um, my peaches, I haven't really noticed too many. Uh, I need to just see if I can see any. I'm hoping the squirrels didn't devour them. So we'll take a look at that. Usually squirrels are really bad about taking peaches. Uh, I think my dad has that problem as well. But I'm gonna turn you guys around here so you guys can see this. Okay, so this is the cluster that I'm talking about. Look at this. Look at this branch that's kind of falling here. I mean, there is so many apples on here. It is absolutely covered. I'm so, so freaking excited. <laughs> you have no idea to preserve these apples this year. I'm just really hoping that all of these do really well and the squirrels and the birds and worms, really. Worms usually get into these apples. Last year they did. I just really hope we can make it to harvest time with these apples so excited so grateful that they're doing really well same with this tree right here this is our other apple tree and this is our younger apple tree but look at that these are a green apple so i think they're more tart but we got quite a bit growing in here as well so we'll get a good little harvest this year off of this tree so excited about preserving apple pie filling. That apple pie filling that I made last year on my videos um, turned out to be the best apple pie filling that I've ever ate from a freezer, cooking it out of the freezer. So looking over here into the peaches, this is almost like a, it's so hard to find where the peaches are. I always have a hard time spotting the peaches and I that's always what I wonder if the squirrels are eating them because I really can never find them so let's see here so we do have like a little bird's nest in this uh, peach tree and I'm noticing I do see a peach way over here which you probably can't see this on camera because it's way up in there um, there's like some goo coming off this peach like a lot of goo and I honestly don't see any of the peaches that I was seeing a couple, like a month or so ago. So I really hope the squirrels are not coming up in here and eating them. Which, it's really hard to spot peaches in this tree. You really gotta just sit here and stare at everything. Here's one. Right here. See right there? There's two actually. But that one has some goo coming off of it as well. I don't know what that what that means. So hopefully those look good, but the other one looks really bad. Like so much goo and looks like a some type of like a fungus on it. So that's a bummer. So quick little story on our one little cherry that we got this year. Literally had one cherry on this tree. Um, we watched this little cherry. For many weeks and it turned red and i came out here one day and i was like really sad because it wasn't there anymore i thought the squirrel got it but i ended up looking down on the ground and it was laying on the ground and by golly i tried that cherry because there was nothing wrong with it 
So I picked it up and I had a little taste test. It was so good. So next year we're gonna get cherries off this tree. Probably not very many, but enough to start our harvest. So that'll be exciting. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this little garden tour. It is the first day of June and I'm excited. I just wanted to show you guys an update. I think it's been about a week since I've really been in here on camera. So I wanted to walk through and kind of show you everything that I was growing. Cause I'm basically done seeding everything, which the okra looks like it might need some help. But other than that, um, everything looking really good and I can't wait to harvest uh, cabbage and get that processed. And yesterday I harvested some of my oregano. So I got that out of the way and I need, actually need to probably harvest some more herbs to kind of get that before it starts bolting. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. And if you don't mind to like and subscribe, we're trying to grow our channel. And I hope you guys enjoy these videos. Uh, I know it's hard to film all these videos all the time because I am a mom of four children and I just tried to get out here when I can. So I appreciate you guys being here and watching our videos and all these nice comments that we get. Thank you so much.